The Dalek spaceship was a lovely set. I mean, Ed, Ed Thomas, the designer, did a fantastic job on that. Um, it looks, you know, I think it looks really dark and sexy, and, it, and, it, and it's, the colours work really beautifully well with the Daleks. And once you've got 10 or 20 of them trundling around through clever use of split screen, it looks like, a, it looks like an amazing set. Um, and it was also supplemented really well by the, um, the people at the mill who were able to give it even more scale by putting what we'd shot into a small area of the screen and creating more Daleks and so on. And also, the, obviously, the exterior of the spaceship they created. I mean, they were modelling the outside of that spaceship for many months before we'd actually filmed it. And so by the time we came to editing, they'd put an awful lot of detail into the ship, much more than you normally get with TV. In some ways, the technology is not a lot advanced from what it was in the 60s and 70s, where you've got three props and you've got to make them look like an army. And the way you do that is by doing a lot of split screens. So, for example, there's a shot in um, towards the end of episode 13 where the Daleks, having finally killed everyone on the game station, surround the Doctor. And it's a kind of a top shot looking down, and it looks like there's about 16 or 20 Daleks surrounding him, when in fact we had three. So, I can't remember the maths, but it means you have to do it five or six or seven times, and every time one of those three Daleks bumps or gets something wrong, you have to do it again. So it took us about half a day just to do that one shot. But the Dalek operators are really great people. Um, <coughs> there's, it takes, takes a lot of operators to, to work one Dalek. You have, um, you have the guy inside Barnaby who's very responsible, you know, very responsive, I should say, and very patient, because they have to do an awful lot of um, things that you wouldn't imagine just watching it, you know, in terms of coordinating the you know, the, the gun stick, the, the sucker, and also the way it turns. I mean, there's a... Whenever a Dalek turns, you can do it the easy way, which is to keep the, you know, the eye stick lined up with the body, and it turns like that. And the more difficult way to do it is to have the eye move around first, and then the body turn it. And that looks much more machine-like and, you know, kind of more gripping. It takes a long time to do, because you have to coordinate Barnaby inside the Dalek, along with um, Colin and his glamorous assistant, who have got their radio-controlled heads um, offset. The radio controls often get snarled up with other radio waves that are in the vicinity. So sometimes, you know, a Dalek will start flashing its lights when it's not speaking, and you have to move the radio transmitters around to try and get a clear signal. Or they just haven't got a clear line of sight because they're trying to avoid radio interference, so they can't see the Dalek properly, so that's not working. And sometimes I'll just hit a bump and everything go waggle, and it'll look like a, you know, a £10 prop rather than a £8,000 prop, which is what it is. So there's an awful lot of people kind of that go into making just one Dalek work. When you've got three Daleks working and they're moving around and they're talking to each other, um, oh, it's a bit like, I imagine what choreographing ballet must be like, you know, with people wearing lead boots. It's, re it's, 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 it's really quite difficult, tricky, but very satisfying when, when, it, when it comes together. I prefer filming on set when I'm on location and vice versa. You just get, when you're on a set, however nice it is, if you're there for more than a week or two, you get bored and people do get a bit slower and a bit, you know, the energy kind of sags and it's just nice to get out in the open air. But once you've been chasing sunlight or clouds for a day or two, you just dream of being inside the set where you've got kind of much more control and you can remove walls and you're not crushed for space and you don't have parking problems and, you know, you tend to get a bit more done. There are, there are many enjoyable parts of the episodes. I think one of, certainly one of the favourite parts is the kind of, you know, the kids part really, which is Daleks having conversations and yelling at each other to launch missiles and exterminate and so on. That's always great fun. I also really enjoyed doing um, the hologram scene with the Doctor, which is um, what we think is going to be the Doctor's final farewell to Rose. In fact, he does get another chance, and that was quite moving, although, in fact, we filmed it in, um, in two different blocks. We did all Chris's stuff first with a double for Rose, and then we did all Rose's stuff with a double for the Doctor, so it's kind of a strange way of doing it, but when it's cut together, I think it's, it's, it's quite powerful. Chris's last day was, you know, um, you know, in many ways, quite a sad, quite a sad day. It was, um, it was also a big scene. It was a scene with the Emperor Dalek, and I think his last lines of dialogue were his big speech to the Daleks, you know, talking about them being... Um, I think disgusted by their own flesh, so we had a really, you know, great, great soliloquy to go out on. Um, and we had a big cast and cast and crew photo, and then he disappeared, and then we carried on filming the afternoon. I mean, there's not a lot of time to, you know, stop and have champagne and you know have canapes or whatever. You have to keep motoring on because there's a lot to do every day.